Hey friends, welcome back. This week it's going to be a little different. We're going to edit some photos. I recognize that field craft and the enjoyment of being out there photographing birds is just a part of the process of making beautiful images. As a matter of fact, my first ever YouTube video was a video about Lightroom. Here, I'll, I'll show you a clip of that. Hey guys, Josh here. This is my absolute first YouTube video, so I have no idea how it's gonna go. Never posted one before. I see a lot of people on YouTube. Normal people are doing it, and I feel like I'm a pretty normal guy. Here's a little quick introduction. I am addicted to bird photography. I've been doing it for about seven, maybe eight years now. I'm not perfect. I have so much room to improve, but I'm, I've learned a lot of things along the way. Yeah, that was rough to watch. And that's the beautiful thing about this hobby. We're always figuring things out. We're getting better. The hope is, is that after nine years of photographing birds, I may have figured a few things out. Now I have to remind you, I'm not a professional. I don't make a living photographing birds or wildlife. I have a regular job and my spare time, my hobby time is spent out in the field and behind this computer. And I love it. I absolutely love doing it. I love sharing these moments with you. I love uh, interacting with you guys. And that that's enjoyment to me. It's not some form of a living. Uh, so I don't, I don't go into this with the uh, intent of selling my images. I don't go with this in the intent of trying to impress you with how great my photography is. I go into it with the attitude and understanding that I just want to share with you my passion and encourage you and inspire you to get out there and take those pictures yourself. Now, as we're editing these images, I want you to understand that there are 10 to 100 different ways of going about something. As a matter of fact, I joke all the time that if you get 10 photographers in a room, you're gonna get 10 different ways to go about doing things. So I'm not saying what I'm gonna show you is the right or wrong way of doing anything. What I hope is that you just maybe pick up a couple of tips, possibly see something that you could introduce into your uh, workflow. Now keep in mind, I do 100% of my photo editing in Lightroom. I don't export my images to Photoshop. I don't export my images to Topaz Labs. If an image is too noisy, I just remind myself to not use such high ISO when I'm out in the field. Uh, these other programs are fantastic. I just spend so much time behind the computer and once again, I'm not selling my images. I'm just sharing the images with you on YouTube and on Instagram. Okay, so here we go. You're gonna look over my shoulder. I'm gonna share my screen with you and you're gonna see what I'm seeing when I'm editing these images. Hopefully it's helpful. Let's dive right into it. Okay, this is the part of Lightroom that nobody really likes to talk about and that's bringing in all the garbage images and regretting pulling the trigger so many times. A lot of sticks in the way, a lot of out of focus stuff. But once you find an image, what I like to do is I like to label it. I hit the number eight on my keypad, turns it green, and just keep going through, taking a close look, making sure the image looks sharp. But yeah, sort through all the garbage. Once you've sorted through and you like those images, what I do is I click the attributes and just show those images that are marked green. So now I went from a couple of thousand images down to about uh, 10 or 12 in this case. And then I really start fine tuning. I'll look at an image from three different angles. I'll put a quick edit on it. In this case, all I'm doing is I'm just bringing up the exposure a little bit, uh, make sure I've got the right white balance. I like to do white balance with this little eyedropper because it gives it a much truer balanced look. I'll pick something gray on the screen to use. Pulling the highlights down, making sure I pull the shadows up a little bit, which I do a lot in bird photography. And I don't mess with the presence right off the bat. But what I do is I go down to the sharpening tool and I hit the alt button and I slide the masking over until all you see is the subject um, outlined. Now I know that I'm not sharpening the background. I'm not sharpening the noise in the background. I'm just sharpening the subject. So cool little trick, hit the alt button, slide that mask and just sharpen the subject itself. Okay, so if I wanna mess with texture, clarity or any of the 
uh, other presence devices. I'll create a mask. I'll isolate the subject. And then what I'll do is I'll invert to where I'm just messing with the background. Now I'll pull a little bit of clarity out, soften that background, and I'll also pull any noise that's in the background. What that does, it's very slight, but it does help separate the subject from the background just a little bit. This one's looking pretty good so far. All right, I'm gonna pull the exposure down just to see where the light is coming from. And with this bird, it's pretty obvious. It's just front lit, a little bit to the right. Uh, so I'm gonna pull the exposure down, create another mask. In this case, it's a radial. And I'm just gonna bring the light in from one direction. Just gives it a little better feel to the image. I've been doing this for years. One of my favorite tools in Lightroom. Absolutely love it. Okay, fine tune it just a little bit here. And there we go. Final crop, I think it looks good. I did good in camera. Image looks sharp. Okay, so here is the before. There's the after, not a huge difference. I did pretty good getting it right in camera, but it just makes the image pop a little bit more. Okay, moving to the next image, I can just simply right click and paste all the attributes from the last image. However, the masking tool, it doesn't carry over as well as I would like. In this situation, the subject isolation doesn't carry over. So I just delete that mask and I go back in and do subject detect again. And I just repeat the process that I did on the last image. Isolate the background, go in and make any changes, get the noise out, image looks sharp. I'll add another little masking tool for the eye. This is something I do sometimes, sometimes not. The reality of it is it doesn't always work. It doesn't always make it better. In this case, it didn't do very much. So I think I just went back and deleted that mask. Okay, moving on to some other images. Uh, in this case, I could go back to the original image and copy those settings and bring it to the next one. But what I'm gonna do is make a new preset. I'll call this a baseline edit and I'm in the month of May. So I'll call it baseline edit May or something like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'll go back to the image that I wanna edit and I'll just go up to that new preset I made and click on it and there you go. So now I have a, a good baseline for that day. I've got several baselines in here that I've made over the years. I fine tune them off and on, but for today, we'll just use this one. Once again, I start with that white balance. I pick a gray spot on the screen and it just looks better. It makes the, the blues pop more. It makes the reds and yellows just stand out. Going through the same process of isolating the subject, invert to the background, pulling the clarity down. There's not a lot of busyness going on in this image, but I do soften it just a little bit. And I notice that the light is once again coming in from the right. So same, same exact principle here, not really doing much different. All right, this looks pretty good. There's the before, there's the after. Once again, subtle, but pretty. Do a quick little crop on this one. I think I was shooting in crop mode already, so starting to lose a little bit of resolution on this one. Typically don't like to crop too much, but it works. It's gonna go on Instagram, not a big deal. All right, put the preset on, check the white balance again, and just repeating the process. I'm gonna try this crop for this one. It'll probably just go on Instagram, yeah, I, th I like it. I mean, that was quick and simple before and after. Basically the same shot before, just a different pose. Okay, now this, this is one of my favorites. Okay, this is where I found a female Western Tanager who just caught a bee. This was pretty fun. Wait, let me show you some footage on that. This one I'm gonna darken down a lot. I'm gonna 
put that radio filter just kind of from the left this time and kind of stop at the stick right there. I felt like she was kind of tucked in on that bush and I, I just, I'm editing to look like I remember seeing it. I messed with that inner circle to kind of adjust the feathering of that radio filter. Uh, what they gave me at the beginning looks just about right. Not a lot I can do to this image. So the before and after is uh, not a lot to it. Just the white balance adjustment and bringing the light in from one direction. Uh, this one's a little different because she's tucked much deeper into that bush. And I loved the shot where she was kind of tossing that bee up in the air and moving it into a better position. Once again, I'm going to darken this one up and then go back with that radial filter again. And it's kind of like a, a reverse vignette. I'm just putting the light where I want to see it. And in this case, I just want to highlight her, right? There's the light coming in from the middle, brings a lot more attention to the subject. Man, what a cool moment. I just loved watching this take place. Yeah, perfect. I think I like that. Okay, I want to finish on this little chickadee because the lighting on this was a little interesting. I like bringing up the shadows in an image and I'm doing that with a radial filter again. You'll see to the top right, it's a little brighter up there. So I'm going to simulate, simulate, I'm going to pretend the light is coming in from that top right. And then I'm going to use um, my adjustment tools to bring the shadows up, the exposure and the shadows in the bird's face. And man, that really makes this image pop. I just, I loved it. He would, he just came in all of a sudden and landed right in front of me. And that was pretty cool. So thanks, Mr. Chickadee. Check out this before and after though. This was pretty drastic. There's the before and there's the after. Okay, well, there you go, guys. It's pretty straightforward kind of down and dirty. I delete a lot of images. I, you know, I take a lot of images and I delete a lot of images, which makes me wonder how important that 20 frames per second is. What am I saying? I, I love all those frames per second, but I take a lot of bad shots. So don't feel bad when you come back from the field and you've got a thousand images and maybe there's only five or six that you like. My goal every year is to take five images that I love. This year, I think I'm up to one, and I don't even know if I got one that I love yet. But the whole point is, is don't get frustrated with yourself if every outing isn't perfect. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was quick. I know it was uh, just kind of breezing through it fast, but that's the way I work. I just identify what I like. I edit it real quick, and I move on. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next time.